look at those clouds. Gorgeous. It looks fake. So 0.6, 1, and 2 for the zoom. Hey everyone, today in this video, I'm gonna be checking out the Google Pixel 6a. I did receive this phone as a gift from Google, but any opinion expressed in this video is strictly my own. That being said, if you're interested in this product, you wanna find out more about it, the link to it will be in the video description. Here's the lovely retail box and packaging right here. Check it out, everything looks great. This phone is available in multiple color options. So we have the charcoal black version here. They have a chalk white version as well and a sage color for you if you want that really cool looking green. Now let's go ahead, let's open up our Google Pixel 6a box and look at the contents. Here are all the contents. First up, we have our product literature with our safety, warranty, and regulatory info. And we have a little help card right here if you need any support from Google in multiple languages. Next, we have our SIM removal tool. We have our USB type C to USB type A adapter for transferring data and setting up your phone. We have a USB type C to USB type C charging cable. And lastly, we have the Google Pixel 6a right here. Ooh, we checked that out. This phone looks great. Now let's go ahead, let's look at it in more detail. First up, you're looking at the front of the display. We have a couple of key icons to go over. On the right hand side of the device, you'll find your power button, your volume buttons right there. USB type C at the bottom for charging, fingerprint sensor built into the display. And on the left hand side, we have our SIM card tray. Let's go ahead now, let's peel this off. Ooh, there we go. Now we have our beautiful 6.1 inch display measured diagonally with a 60 Hertz refresh rate. Let's keep looking at the device. We'll rotate it all different sides. And you may notice on this A device, this is the first time we don't have a headphone jack. So the 5A did have a headphone jack. Now with the 6A, we do not have that feature anymore. On the back, we do have, looks like a glass finish with the Google logo and branding. Looks very similar to the Google Pixel 6 and 6 Pro with the camera bar up at the top. For comparison to the right, we have the Google Pixel 6 Pro. You may notice we have one less camera with the Google Pixel 6a. And you can get a feel for their sizes side by side. Let's talk about those rear cameras for just a second. We have one 12.2 megapixel wide camera with a 77 degree field of view. And we have one 12 megapixel ultra wide camera with 114 degrees field of view. And on the front, we have one front facing camera up at the top. There you go. You can see it in the reflection of the display right now. Little hole punch up there. That's gonna be an eight megapixel camera with an 84 degree field of view. Now let's go ahead, let's power on our Pixel 6a. All right, the Pixel 6a is powered on. Check it out, the screen looks great. Really quickly, I wanna make a note in correction. Earlier on, I called the back glass. The back of this phone is just plastic, but upon first impression, it gave me that glass and premium vibe feel. That's why I said that, but after holding it, spending some time with it, it's definitely plastic. Now let's go over our Pixel 6a features. So the first thing we're gonna do, and I guess this is always highly controversial, is we're gonna try out the fingerprint sensor. So it's built into the front of the display. We have our indicator right there letting us know where to put our finger. Let's go ahead, let's try it out. See how fast it is. So just put our finger on. That was awesome, that was great. Let's do it again. Really responsive to me. We even have our thumb set. So let's do our thumb here. No issues there, very responsive, fluid, works great. I'll do it one more time actually holding the device too. So here we go. Not bad at all in my opinion. Really happy with that. Can't tell anything between any of the other Pixel phones, even with the back ones, that seems right in line with the Pixel 5a 5g I've been using for about the last year. Before I download a bunch of apps for benchmarking and testing, I wanted to show you the usable storage space out of the 128 gigabytes that the Pixel 6a has. From our storage settings, 12% is used right out of the box. We have 112 gigabytes free. And here's a breakdown of that. So 16 gigabytes used total. 
13 for our system and three for our apps right out of the box. So let's talk about our Pixel 6a performance. We used Intuitu Benchmark to conduct this test. And on the Pixel 6a, we got a score of 719828. And it actually outperformed our Google Pixel 6 Pro, which using the same benchmarking app, we ran them at the exact same time, got a score of 709758. Really impressive stuff if you ask me. What's so exciting about this A-series lineup of Pixel phones is we have the same Google Tensor system on a chip found in both the 6A and the 6 Pro and obviously the Google 6 for that matter. So the value is tremendously there on this A device, I would say, compared to all the other A devices in the past from that one metric alone. And in this case, I don't know why in this particular test, we actually exceeded the performance of the 6 Pro, but they're very similar to each other, as you would expect, again, because they feature the same Google Tensor chip. But let's look at a breakdown of the scores for both these devices. So for the Pixel 6a, we have our CPU score here of 1962.41. On the 6 Pro, we got a CPU score of 1788.03. For our GPU, for the 6A, we got a score of 2836.69. And for our 6 Pro, we got a score of 2703.84. For memory, the 6A, we got a score of 1066.55. Whereas for the 6 Pro, we got a score of 1144.46. And lastly, for our UX, the 6A got a score of 13.32.63, and the 6 Pro got a score of 14.61.25, both running Android 12. So how does the 6A compare to the competition? Let's look at the ranking. So at the top, we got the Motorola Edge 30 Pro, the Mi 12 Pro. Rounding out the top 10, we got the Galaxy S22 Ultra. A lot of Galaxy devices right here, OnePlus 10 Pro. Sony phones, Realme, Galaxy S21. So here's the Pixel 6a showing up right here at number 36. And then a little bit further down, we got the Google Pixel 6 Pro and the Google Pixel 6. Again, all showing very similar scores there. But this app puts it in line with the Galaxy S21, the OnePlus 9 Pro. Galaxy S21 FE. So you get the idea there. And you can get a feel for how this ranks compared to some of the competition. Now you're listening to the raw mic audio from the Google Pixel 6a. This is how everything's gonna sound if you want to make or take phone calls using the built-in microphone, or maybe you just wanna record some audio with the built-in mic. This is what you can expect. I'm also gonna hold it way out here, about an arm's length away from me. We're gonna continue talking to give you a little bit more sample audio. But this is the Pixel 6a mic quality. Now it's time to talk about the 6.1 inch display on the Pixel 6a. This is a full HD plus display at 1080 by 2400. It is OLED featuring 429 PPI. The biggest thing I feel like a lot of people have covered is the fact that this is only a 60 Hertz display. But in my opinion, as somebody coming from the Pixel 5a, 5g, no issues there. Very similar browsing experience at 60 Hertz. But let me show you with some popular apps. So we got YouTube pulled up right here. What you can expect if you're gonna use this to browse. So everything looks great, very clear, very crisp and detailed and thorough. Having videos load or to play on here look nice too. And we can also pull up some popular tech apps. So let's go ahead and let's grab the Verge right here. We'll just browse it, do some scrolling. So you can decide for yourself how you feel about the display. I think everything looks great. The 60 Hertz does not bother me for a phone in this price point. 
I think it's exactly what you would expect. We have an article, so look at the images. Look at how clear and crisp everything is. All the different titles, fonts, text, graphics. Super responsive. So everything, in my opinion, looks great. It's working great, especially if you want to read articles, look at photos, watch videos, things like that. Really a nice device for it. Now we're going to be sampling a couple of seconds of the song Claim Your Victory by Music Chef. Music Chef is home to stream safe music for content creators. Let's go ahead, let's give it a listen. A little bit louder and more powerful than I was expecting. Overall, count me impressed, but it's never a bad idea to pick up a pair of Pixel Buds. The Pixel 6a features Wi-Fi 6, so I went ahead, I conducted a speed test so you can see the results and compare it to your device. There's so many variables from your internet service provider to the coverage around your house that affect the results here. So in our case, using a Wi-Fi 6 router and connected to our five gigahertz network, these are the results that we got, 631 down, 545 up in a seven millisecond ping. We have some app performance right here. We got rocket speeds for Chrome, Google Maps, Netflix, Twitch, YouTube, and Zoom. So this is gonna perform really, really well across the board, regardless of the app you're going to be using. So if you want to use this device to stream a lot of video, watch your favorite live streamers, make or take Zoom calls, you can do that with ease thanks to Wi-Fi 6. And don't forget if you're using a 5G network as well, you'll get some fantastic speeds too to allow you to use all of your favorite apps. Now it's time to share some of my favorite Google Pixel features with you. A lot of these are not exclusive to the Pixel 6a, so if you're already a Pixel user, you probably know I've experienced a lot of these. So my first one is, I'm not sure if it's even technically a feature, but I love having Google News just to swipe away on your screen, and Google curates this for you and your preferences. Sometimes they get it wrong, I'll be honest, but usually they do a great job curating news, articles, videos, things that you're interested in and want to read about, catch up on, and see what's going on. Very nice, I love browsing this. I check it daily, multiple times a day. Next is the now playing feature. I highly recommend that you turn this on. You can find it in your settings. Just search for now playing. And here we go, we have all of our now playing settings. This is exactly what it looks like too on your lock screen. So it'll listen to the background. Once it recognizes a song, it'll populate on your screen, the song name and the artist. It also keeps a log in history for you. So you can view that down here, the now playing history and we can see what it's heard and listened to today. And we can favorite those songs. So if there's something on a commercial, it could register, something at a restaurant, right on the TV, the web, the radio, things like that. It's really cool to have this built right into the phone and just have it going on in the background. The next feature is Google call screening. This might be the best pixel feature ever. I just can't stress enough all the spam calls that I get, that it filters that I'm not even aware of, but I love being able to have right at your fingertips the ability to screen a call and see in real time a transcript of the conversation to know if you should pick up or decline. That feature saves me a ton of time and again, prevents a lot of unnecessary interruptions by filtering out a ton of spam calls. I'm not sure how they do it with their database or what they have going on in the background, but it really is an impressive feature that again is a value add to this device. Piggybacking off the call screening feature, Google also has the hold for me feature. So you can use Google Assistant to keep your spot in line while you're trying to dial into those dreaded customer phone service calls for whatever massive corporation that won't actually get you to somebody on the phone. It is helpful 
going through those long queue lines and waits to be able to automate some of that process with Google Assistant. You honestly didn't think I was gonna forget about the Google Pixel 6a camera, did you? So this is the front facing eight megapixel camera. Check it out right here. We're in the studio. Everything looks great. You're also listening to the raw audio again being captured from the Pixel 6a. Let's go ahead, let's take some more sample video. Now we're using the back camera right here at 1x and we're looking at the Pixel family. Let's go to 2x, back to 1x, and then 0.6 to activate the ultra wide. We'll do that again right here on the 6a. So we're at ultra wide, 0.6, 1, and then we have 2x, back to 1 and then 0.6 for ultra wide. Now we're outside recording some video again from the front facing camera. It's really sunny and bright out, oh my goodness. Pay attention to the background noise too. Again, what is the microphone picking up? How do you like the video quality? Now we're under some shade right here. So the lighting environment has changed. There's a breeze, there's a lawnmower running, birds are chirping. I think the camera's doing a really nice job given the harsh lighting condition due to the fact that it's super sunny out, we'll rotate again. So you can get a feel for this camera quality outside. Point six x 1x, and 2x. Look at those clouds, gorgeous, it looks fake. So 0.6, 1, and 2 for the zoom using the rear cameras on our Pixel 6a. So now we're back indoors. We have Doug the dog here taking another quick video. Different lighting environment now. Again, indoors, no lights on besides some natural window light. So you can get a feel for the quality here. We're at 0.6x, and here it is at one. Now we're trying out the different stabilization. I'm going down the steps right now. We have our active stabilization on. So let's go ahead, let's do a quick run. And then we're gonna run again. Go up the steps. Look at Doug the dog. Back down the steps. And we're running around here, bouncing up and down. So you can get a feel for that active stabilization and how good it's gonna do. If you wanna just hold the phone in your hand like we're doing. No gimbal, tripod, or anything else. So far, so good with the Google Pixel 6a. Let me leave you with a couple of thoughts. First thing I wanna point out and mention is the size of this device. I really like the size of this device and I'm glad they're not making it larger. So in fact, it feels a little bit smaller than the Pixel 5a 5G, which I like. I'm glad it's trending in that direction. I don't want this phone larger. Obviously, if you want a larger phone, you got the Google Pixel 6. Pro. But for me, as a longtime Pixel user since the original one, I felt like the Pixel 5 was the perfect size. So I'd like to see a phone get closer to that dimension and spec than further away. Second thing I want to point out, as you would expect with the 6 and 6 Pro, the 6A also has moved the fingerprint sensor. This is kind of a sad day for me because I really like on the 5A and basically all the other Pixel devices that didn't have the fingerprint sensor in the screen is the fact that we could use that back sensor as a button to pull down our taskbar, our drop down menu, whatever you want to call it from the phone. That was really convenient and I liked having that feature so it will be missed dearly in my case. Lastly, I want to mention the headphone jack. So call me old school and I knew this day was coming at some point, but I was really holding on to hope that the 6A would continue the legacy of giving us a headphone jack, but that is not the case. For most people, I know it doesn't matter anymore, but I just don't like dongles, and I drive old cars that don't have Bluetooth to connect to, so it will be dearly missed in my case. So just keep that in mind, couple of thoughts for you to dwell on, 
The size is great in my opinion. There are a couple of features if you're coming from an older Pixel device that you want to weigh the pros and cons to make sure you're making the best decision for your needs.